Padverse Season 3. Got a lot of plans for this season. I'll explain as I go. Let's just jump right into it. First of all, we need a big world. So let's not do tiny, small, standard, large, huge, gigantic, titanic. We're going to do Iceberg, the biggest one. That's definitely going to lag my game in future videos. Oh, <laughs> I'm liking the look of this world. Even these little islands, dude, they're big enough to have a pretty decent size. Well, maybe not this island. This one for sure. I really like this one that we just got. I thought I was going to have to do it multiple times, but nope, this is really good. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the game. And this season's going to be different. Instead of placing down the humans first, doing an episode or two on them, putting down elves, and then slowly, slowly including all the other species, we're going to do it all at once. And not only do it all at once, but we're going to put down multiple cities of all of them. Okay, why aren't they building cities? Come on, build cities. Okay, every everybody else is come on humans build cities what are you doing okay i guess it's fine whatever i'm just gonna let him go okay perfect this is good this is exactly what i wanted all sorts of empires all sorts of cultures all sorts of different stories let's get it and i'll explain more in a second so it looks like dwarves and humans are already fighting that's not a good thing uh whatever i guess okay elves are coming down and invading the dwarves okay this is really bad um oh uh, <laughs> i was hoping they'd all just build a city Maybe I should kill the extras. Let me kill all of the extra ones we don't need. Same with all the extra dwarves and the extra orcs and the extra humans. All right, anyways, now that the infestation of people is uh, taken care of. So I dedicated the south part here to all humans. The dwarves are all up here. The elvish land is over here. And then the orcs are kind of banished to the islands, but they do have some footholds on the mainland. If you think that's unfair, just wait a few episodes. I'm sure they'll own all of the north. If not, I've killed out the humans as well. And anybody who's been on my channel for long enough knows that too. So chill. <laughs> so for this series, we're going to keep diplomacy on, rebellions on, kingdom expansion and stealing borders we're gonna keep on hunger old age we're gonna keep all of this on we're also gonna turn on natural disasters and other disasters and to spice things up we are going to turn on angry villagers which will lead to more village destruction i think so the series in a whole is gonna be way different we're gonna come down here to the original blue uh you know human city and we're gonna name it pableon we're gonna name the cat culture pabish in the empire pableon hell in the darkness oh my glove what that's the catchphrase oh perfect so we got our pableon uh let's get a pab in here you're pab now pab is agile <laughs> and also bald cool so he'll live for a little bit uh i'm not gonna make him immortal anyways so let's list off all of the cities starting out with the humans we got pableon the ill mahuta holy ik holy two great aromu opak hegemony ahikon usli which is on fire dwarves are here what <laughs> what let me just get rid of those guys holy eshita an olo of moon for the dwarves we got miners of a rim seal rocks their hill shields Osatil Mountain, or Rocks, Ancient Thor Anril, and Ancient Nur. For the elves, we got Royal Atadi, Ancient Lif Amra, If Madi, Royal Afadi, Green Olin, and Arrows of Soez. For the orcs, we got Great Odorera, Oztop, <laughs> Strong Tapak, and Blood of Rapo. And last but not least, Ordz. So that's all of the cities. We'll see how many are left by the end of even this episode. Click play. All right, anything can happen and everything can happen. Unlike last season, I am not going to aid the humans at all just to keep them alive for the sake of story. If the humans get killed off, they get killed off. If Pableon dies, Pableon dies. That's it, all right? The series can still go on though, even if Pableon is not a thing. World Age is eight years old. And now let's watch. Let's see what happens. See how this new world unfolds. Oh, I just realized I listed off the kingdoms, not the cities. I guess that's fine. The cities look like they're way easier to pronounce. <laughs> it's like Amuwo or Opork instead of, what was I reading? Mahuda and the Ill? I guess those ones are easy. That's a bad example. It looks like these two are already fighting. The Tensor, Tensnor and Omiudo Anor, whatever. It's just the orcs and the elves are right next to each other. However, the elves can handle themselves against the orcs, that's for sure. At least longer than the humans or dwarves can. Look at this look, look at this crab island over here. What? That's awesome. There's just like a little sandbar with a ton of crabs. So looking at the kingdoms, three of the orc nations are first place right now. Oh, okay. So in the top five, four of them are orcs. I think a lot of that's just because when I was spawning them in, apparently all the other species just decided to like run away. So I had to kill them all when the orcs actually just stayed in their city. So they have like a population boost. So that should level out over time. But otherwise, in terms of humans, holy ishite. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to say the S word. I'll get demonetized. But they're number one in the humans right now in terms of population 20. Not a lot, not a lot at all. So what's cool though about filling up the map like this is that nobody's able to colonize. If they want to expand their borders, they have to fight. And so it's going to weed out the weak really quickly. Doesn't give anybody an extra chance. Um, totally forgot to favorite Pab. Uh... Uh-oh, he was bald, where is he? 
Does this him? Did he grow hair? Now that's a duba. Here he is. Okay, cool. I found him. The, there, there we go. Now we start. Okay. Some cities are already getting blocked off in terms of expansion, like uh, ignore. This Elvish nation is already being blocked off by El Hill Nil, which is already being blocked off by Ifnam Asadi, which this city's already getting destroyed. It looks like it's been cut in half by orcs. Yeah, look at that. The orcs are fighting it already. This is going to be our first loser, I think, because the orcs are just monsters, really. However, so far it has been peaceful. Nobody's strong enough or willing to fight at the moment, because it really just means suicide. Side. Only the orcs have picked a fight, and it's with a weaker elvish nation, so I mean, they might as well. Unless this guy dies. Come on, so he's fighting two elves. Will he win or will he die? Oh, he super died, dude. Gotta enjoy it when it lasts when the cities are like super tiny and just little wooden houses. Soon it'll just be stone kingdoms full of strong militaries and insane amounts of population. The world population's already over a thousand. No cities over a hundred though, not yet. Probably one of the orcish ones will be first. This one's already at 72. We're running out of room though on their small island, so we'll see what happens on this one. I think this one has t a tiny bit more room. And then this one's got plenty of room to definitely have over 100 population. Where all the other cities are gonna have to fight for it. Ooh. Actually, very quickly, almost all of the land has been grabbed up. There's very little amounts of free land. The cultures have also started mingling. So looking at the top five now, now the top four is orcs. And the fifth one's actually a dwarf. A dwarvish nation. Cool. The dwarves never do good. That's kind of refreshing to see. If the dwarves reign supreme on this world, I would be happy, not gonna lie. So the humans and dwarves are now touching borders, and the elves and dwarves are about to be touching borders, and the orcs continue just to push out the elves. However, this city is hanging on with 15 population. It's more than it was. But the orcs will start having problems as soon as they start coming in contact with the ones that have had only but growth. They've not been disturbed at all. A tornado's already appeared. Oh no, the crabs! The poor crabs, dude. No. It's another little crab sandbar. Are you gonna go attack the orcs or no? Doesn't look like it. Okay, death not. Whatever. Oh, it is. It is. Okay, it, it has a few orcs. It's not gonna do too much damage, though. It's already a small tornado at this point. So at this point, borders have been solidified. There's basically no more free land. Uh, Yiddijran over here has a little bit to go. But otherwise, that's it. Like, the world has been claimed. Be besides between the orcs and the elves. But that's for obvious reasons. There has been no war, really, besides there's been no war um we should start seeing war as they grow in population and want to spread their wings even the orcs and elves right now are at peace okay well pavilion's growing nicely i purposely gave them a bit of a strategic location they kind of have this cutoff point just because i wanted them to be able to uh survive longer than two episodes <laughs> pab's 50 years old now though he's not gonna last very long he has eight children to his name though i don't know why he's sad oh you know why they haven't done too much wars because their cultures are super low level they pretty much know nothing they don't even know how to make a weapon they'd all be going to war right now with their fists if they were it's only a matter of time world population has jumped up though to 1800 and it's growing slowly but surely once it really gets up there in population it just starts booming because so many people are just gonna start having kids and then there'll be a huge war population usually drops then it slowly recovers back up we got our first nation over 100 population which is one of the orcs the Ke kenor's rid whoa 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 a meteorite dang these dwarves are lucky dude jeez look at this elvish city over at el hill it's really just poking its foot in every door isn't it it's blocked off oeknor it blocked off ifnam asadi it's trying to help omiodori anor i think against tesnor at least that's kind of what it's doing, if not on purpose. Kind of acting as a buffer zone. Oh, okay, a war has begun between two dwarvish nations. Between Obohor and Adril. Um, okay, so the dwarves are fighting. All sorts of humans are going to war right now. Uh, which ones? These guys are, these two. Oh, balls, dude, I don't know. These two are, these two. Okay, they're, they're declared war on everything right now. More dwarves are declared war on each other. Okay, the whole world's imploding already. Oh, okay, so a drill totally just whipped a boar as well. Okay, so we got our first empire, a drill. And it's also attacking up here. They're retreating, it looks like. Okay, I don't know why. Uh, maybe they made peace. Doesn't seem like any human nation has taken over any other human nation yet. Okay, there's so much war going on right now. I think that's a dwarvish nation that just declared war on an elvish. But however, they're really far away, so I don't think they'll do much about it. Okay, these guys, uh, El Hill just uh, declared war on Ifna Masadi. That'd be a big advantage for these guys to claim that. That'd pretty much secure them, I think. They'd be pretty powerful. A Jarilla sending in its forces to Osadam, which now has to fight off two cities worth of forces. Um, so it's not going to be looking good for him. It looks like Wakuva is just being obliterated right now, but Yiddidran 
Oh, wait, no. That's totally by uh, Yurima. Oh, no way. They're being taken over, too. They picked a fight with too many neighbors, and they got squashed because of it. They're in Oris going to war with the Bulge here, and I think Bulge here is winning right now. They're pushing them into their own city, I think. Yeah, there they go. They're taking them, too. Oh, oh, they're defending. What's going on? What's going on? They're killing off the king or something. Oh, they totally got it. All they have to do is walk back in, and the percentage going is going back up. They're going to take it as they run around and just slaughter the citizens. <laughs> there we go. It's theirs. Okay, a drill's taking over a pier up in the north um however they yep there they go they're taking it and it's been taken so a drill's becoming a very powerful nation right now osadum has somehow avoided being taken over by them doesn't look like for long though Hinson just took over a pork oh and a diva's taken over you photo or whatever <laughs> so now this like middle like section of the map has been unified under a diva at least for now these guys are kind of like the human's first defense against any other species when you think about it so hopefully they grow strong. I don't know how also dumb has not been taken over yet. They only have 15 population, 14. They're literally being burned down to the ground. <laughs> just give up, fools. Surrender. They're just going around killing them all. They might not want the city left. No elvish nation yet has an empire. Nor does any Orcish. They're all independent city-states. Oh, there we go. Okay, also Dom has been taken over with three population left. They really cleared them all out. A drill though is easily the most powerful. They're easily the most powerful by almost another hundred people. They're a hill shields. What's their uh with bread in the sea? That's a dumb slogan. <laughs> However, they are pretty prone to rebellions at the moment. And they're at war with the heirs of the Soas. Oh, whoa. They're, so they're at war with one of the elves. Their culture is so weak right now. As their culture develops, they'll be able to govern more cities without fear of rebellion. So we'll see how long a drill's able to keep these under its power. Oh, and it looks like Ototil was trying to attack Bear Anor. Oh, it's totally going to take it too. All right, trading hands, eh? Bulgaher is losing some power. Potentially going to lose it all as well. Especially if this takes that. Which then a drill's got a big enemy. Ooh, okay. Yudatran just took over Wakuva. Which means Yurima or whatever here is uh, definitely hurting. With only six population left, the city's still alive. Oh, and they're trying to take it back. Hurting more of the population with only five now. I'm sure Yudadran is not going to like that. Which they have a pretty decent sized army. The elves are being taken over? By what? Tesnor? How? Wait, that doesn't make sense. How can they be like taken over? What? <laughs> Maybe it was by Emyon? Because these guys are orcs right these guys are elves what am i dumb test numbers elves dude what oh my glove and orcs are in here killing them i did uh, 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 uh the entire time i thought these were orcs i'm so dumb dude look at them go okay well test is dead that's too bad i was like no way that they're gonna take them over that doesn't make any sense they're elves dude well balls okay okay the city's dead uh, i don't remember the name yakuva or something like that they're go they're gone after being pulled apart by yudadran and yurima so Otatil did totally unify like the middle section of the map here, but they have three borders to defend with three cities defending them. Uh, Tesno is probably going to be the second city to go, not going to lie. So rest in pieces, the elves. The orcs are going to reign king over here with a over the over 100 population. Okay, these guys are going to war. Everybody's at war right now. Just assume everybody. Oh, Aqua is being taken over by Uporo. However, it's stuck at 8%. It looks like most of their military died. The king's coming over. <laughs> Scared them away. They're taking it. They're taking it. They're taking it. And there we go. Aqua is no longer independent it is now under control of aboro and tesnor has got one population left <laughs> run dude run just just retreat go move to another elvish city and he's dead that's a rip dude as many empires now well not as many as there was so first and second place now are dwarves and then third place is elves fourth place is humans and fourth and fifth place is elves i did not expect that dude i'm excited to see which dwarvish nation wins i if i had a bet it would be a drill but anything's possible all right that's gonna be it for this episode what a fast and crazy start for the series i can't wait to see what happens and who's gonna be last remaining think of it like a very long lasting four nations fight each other video see you guys in the next episode